I've been creating videos for Slimehouse for a good few years now and in that time I've made all different types of content for this channel but by far some of my favourite things to film are me toy hunting. I've been toy hunting out in Japan several times, in America several times, Italy, France, all these different places but to say that I'm English I've actually done very little toy hunting on camera here in England. So all that's about to change because recently me, my girl Rox and my friends at the Turnstile podcast took a trip over to what is possibly the most famous toy shop in England, the Leicester Vintage Toy Shop. This is how we got on. Slimehouse TV, myself Theo Kane, and today we're doing a show on the road. We're going to check out somewhere called the Leicester Vintage Toy Shop. Now, this is somewhere that I should have checked out ages ago and just never have for all the different toy hunting that I've done around the world. I've actually done very little toy hunting in toy shops here in England. I'm also joined today by the Turnstile podcast, Alex and Tony, and then also the Leicester Toy Boys, as I like to call them, have also got their own YouTube show. So it's like a weird meeting of minds and worlds today. So we headed off to Leicester, like I said, me, my girl rocks and my friends at the Turnstile podcast because they wanted to film a new episode for their show. We stopped for a little McDonald's on the way. I had my favourite, the Veg McPlant meal. And after yamming that, we arrived at Leicester, parked the car and headed towards the Leicester Vintage Toy Shop. We're here, we just landed in Leicester. Apparently the toy shop's like a couple minutes walk away. So... I'm itching to get and see some vintage shit. Let's go. Now, although I've never met the owners of the shop, Joe and Gav, we have spoke on Instagram a little bit and they also have their own YouTube channel. So they understand how this thing works. And I told them that, yo, as soon as we arrive at the shop, we're going to be filming the second we get there. I want to be filming a lot. And they're game for that. They understand it because like I said, they do their own show, which was perfect. So we're here. It's a pretty unassuming shop. It's easy to miss if you don't know where it is. And also there's only like one little window with a few little bits in. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's inside. I can also see, already see some cool shit through the window. So let's get inside. Let's check it out. Let's all go in. Nice to meet you. Nice one. I told you. Oh, nice one. I told you that we're coming with a few cameras. That prepared you. Yeah, first time coming down, man. I'm looking forward to having a look around. Yeah, cool. Go for it, get stuck in. Yeah. Get stuck here, that's what we like. So we arrived at the toy shop. I introduced myself to Joe and Gav. We met properly, so that was cool. And then started to look around and realised, like, yo, this shop has some serious fucking merchandise. Oh, look at that. Rambo Bowie knife. Such an unnecessary amount of packaging for a little blade and a bandana. Ooh, got some nice action master. This is nice. Like well presented loose figures with a weapon. I like my, my loose figures with weapons. And like I said, straight away, I'm just seeing so much cool stuff. I'm seeing some Rambo bits. They've got a whole A-team cabinet, a whole TMNT cabinet. I'm seeing lots of loose figures with all the weapons. If you know me, you know that I love collecting loose figures, but I like them with all the weapons. So whenever I'm in a place like this and I see loose figures on sale with their weapons, it gets me gas because that's my shit right there. So if you watch this show, you'll know I work with Nima Studios a lot and I design a lot of their packaging and things. So I designed these fiendish feet backings and I also designed this set layout here. I also saw a bit of Nima Studios on the shelf, which is also nice. If you know me, you also know that I work quite closely with Nima Studios on some of their releases, doing the backing card art and things like that. Not on all their stuff, but on particular things. So it's always nice to see their stuff out in shops as well, out in the wild. Seeing something that you've worked on on a shop shelf is always fucking awesome. Got muscle figures here. Take that up there, that's cool. Posters, old Indiana Jones poster. I like like the, the old display stands. If you know me, you'll also know that I love Thundercats so much so that I got this guy, Larry Kenny, who voices Lionel, to narrate my movie, Unit 11. Like, I go hard when it comes to Thundercats. I love my motto, I love all the 80s stuff, but Thundercats always has a special place in my heart. It's dope to see all this stuff laid out looking so nice. See this figure here, Driller. This is £2,150, and at the time it cost £3.25. And my dad bought like 15 of them from like an own bargain store and brought it home and was like, do you want one Theo? And I was like, nah, it's a bit of a crap toy, I'm not bothered, I'll just sell them. 
and uh, he had like 15 of them in a suitcase and now they're like the most, one of the most sought after Thundercats toys. Also, whenever I'm in a place like this, I always feel super comfortable. I love being surrounded by retro shit and toys. I'm very familiar with all these lines, whether it's stuff that I've got in my own collection, stuff that I'd like or stuff that I don't necessarily want, but I appreciate it and it's nice to see it around. I always feel very much at home when I'm around this stuff and I love talking about it if you can't already tell. Look at that bubble gum, right good. Unopened box of bubble gum. That's the stuff I like. The stuff that was made to be thrown away. Toys are very disposable, but bubble gum packets and stuff like that's not supposed to still be here. That's supposed to be in a tip years ago. So the fact it's existed, it's unopened, it's fucking awesome. Now, when you come into a shop like this, you have to be in the same mind frame that you do at a toy fair. You don't come into a shop like this with the same mind frame that you do when you're at a car boot or a market stall or a charity shop where everything's gonna be generally cheap. Not always, we've had this conversation on Toy Talk Tuesday, but generally at a car boot, things are gonna be a lot cheaper. So you, you kind of just pick up anything that's remotely interesting, remotely retro. But when you come to a store like this, not to say that you won't find treasure here, but everything is priced by traders, by a collector who knows the price of stuff, who knows the current market. So you're not gonna come in here and just buy everything willy-nilly. You're looking for that one thing that you wanna add to your collection. And like I said, I'm not a dealer. I don't buy to sell. I'm buying something for my own collection. So I don't mind paying a, a decent price for things. I just wanna pay a price that I'm happy with. So I'm looking around. There's lots of cool stuff in this store that I wouldn't mind bringing home, but I wanna bring home the creme de la creme. I wanna bring home that piece that's like the, a real standout thing for my collection. Check that shit, look, the full karate kid. Attack Alley and Training Center. That's fire. I love that. It's mad how big the boxes are, isn't it? Like fucking ginormous. So even if you were like, yeah, man, I'm gonna buy that. Where are you putting that thing? You see my toy room. I ain't putting that nowhere. Oh. Battle Beast Mask. Look at this here. Johnny Seven Gun. He talks about that in um, Jingle All The Way. He says, when I was a kid, I wanted the Johnny Seven Gun. Seven guns in one. And it's that. Now, toy hunting in England is so much different to toy hunting in places like Japan and America because they're gigantic countries and we're England, we're fucking small, we're little Britain. So the vintage toy hunting in England is so scarce. Like, this is why it gets rarer and rarer to find cool stuff in charity shops and market stores and car boots now because this is such a small country. Our stock, our stuff that we had as kids and that people had that's gone onto car boots and gone in charity shops has since been picked up. It's turned hands a hundred times and it's ended up into places like this, into shops like this and into toy fairs so it's harder and harder now in our country to find vintage stuff out in the wild and it all ends up in places like this and that's why i'm not surprised that this shop's got so much cool stuff in it because it's been here for years they get lots of phone calls people phoning in saying i've cleared my loft out i've got a load of gear or people selling their collections other toy dealers that want to sell up their stock they form places like the leicester vintage shop and they buy it all so like i said i'm not surprised that this shop's got so much cool stuff it's been here for years it's very reputable and people know it so this is where people bring the stuff that they want to get rid of that's vintage here's some gi joe power loads and oh i love this thing the cyber skull check that rocks i always like this piece a piece that's become like really sought after in the last few years. Action Force, like seven years ago, no one cared about them. I was selling them at Toy Fair for like two quid, couldn't get rid of them. And then now nah, everyone wants them again. But you can see why everyone wants that ship because it's dope. Anything with a skull is always fire. So I'm having a look around and I'm having a look at all the cool stuff and as you can see on the day there was so much cool stuff and I couldn't stop talking about it but then one thing caught my eye and it wasn't a toy, it wasn't a play set, it wasn't a carded figure or anything like that, it was the back room. Now when I come into a toy shop like this I'm always fascinated with what's in the back because I'm like yeah you've got all this stuff out here, this is all the stuff that's priced, this is all the stuff that you've looked at and you've cleaned up and you've put on the shelf and you know what you're selling. I want to see what's in the back. I want to see the stuff that's not clean. I want to see the stuff that's not priced. I want to see the stuff that's broken. I want to see the accessories and all that kind of thing. And the, the place that you find that shit is in the back room. So I'm always fascinated in trying to get in the back room when I get to these places. I did it in Italy. Like you'll know if you watch my Italy toy hunting video, I couldn't wait to get in the back and see all that back stock. So yeah, man, I see that back room and I, and I, start, getting, uh, I start getting ideas. That's where you want to go, the back room. That's where the dope shit is in these shops, the back. The, the room where the stuff isn't priced. You haven't got any loose bits in back out, have you? I'm after a, a Napoleon Bonafrog loose. I've got all these bits. I just need the figure. It's yeah. like the ugly looking one out of the two. Yeah, the, the yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not that hard to get. It's just a case of, I yeah. thought, I'll just see if you've got one here. 
So I was asking Joe and Gav about a figure that I wanted. It was just a loose figure because I had some weapons that I wanted to put with it to make it complete. And I asked him if he had this loose figure. And Gav said, I don't know. Well, got a load of like spares and accessories in the back. I'll have a look. And I, then my brain's going. I start getting ideas. I think, oh, I wouldn't mind having a look in the back there. And somewhere in that conversation, Joe and Gav said, do you want to just go back and have a look for yourself and just have a look in the back and you can take your cameras and nobody's ever filmed it before so it'll be an exclusive and I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm all over that shit. You don't have to ask me twice. So not only have we got to look around the shop and check out all the cool stuff in there, I'm now going to check out the back room, the basement where the treasure is, hopefully. Hey, you down there if you want. A bit of a I'm going to turn that down. Yeah. Go downstairs with Gav. <laughs> I'd like to see that shit, yeah, 100% if you don't mind. Are we allowed to take cameras there? Nobody else has seen that now on camera. Oh no, oh wicked, exclusive. It is, it is a bomb site now. Right, right, let's go. Mine <laughs> down we go. So yeah, I'll take you all round. Oh, nice one, look at this. There you go, there's our little photo area. So Gav took us downstairs and I'm buzzing to have a nosy about in the basement and the back room. Like I said, this is where the treasure is. So I'm seeing toys that are ripped off the card. I'm seeing incomplete things, broken things, toys with scribbles on them, all that kind of shit. This is the place that I want to be having a nosy around and try and find something awesome. And uh, normally this room, you can't get in it. It's stacked up like this. Right, right. But the auction guys came down. Yeah, lots of like random. Like to have a mooch. That that old, what? What's that, an old pinball? Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah, that is cool. It's really old as well. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm also like right into like arcades and carnival pieces and things. Oh, wicked. They had a really cool old rusty metal like 1950s pinball machine, maybe even earlier. So fucking awesome to see it again. I ain't gonna buy that. I've got no room for that, but I fucking appreciate seeing it. And this is also the kind of place where I'm having a look around and I'm seeing stuff that I might not even necessarily want to buy myself. Like I said earlier, it's just stuff that I want to be seeing. It's the stuff that I like to see. Quite often when you're at a car boot and stuff like that, I see a stall with some vintage shit on it. It doesn't even have to be toys. Could be clothes, could be curtains, could be housewares, could be stuff for your kitchen. But I know that if that's there and that's old, there's a chance that there's going to be something else old there that I want to buy. And that's the mind frame when I go into a place like this. I want to be seeing the kind of thing that I'm after. Doesn't even necessarily have to be the thing that I'm wanting personally, but if I see that trend, the treasure that I'm after can't be far behind. I saw that. Look at them weird old masks. I love that shit. It's like some old Don Post thing. Look at that. That's fucking horrible. Good for a good for a bank robbery. So we're looking around and we find some old cool Halloween masks, like some old Don Post masks, and I love that old Halloween carnival shit. So they're awesome to see. Look at that the old older eight mask. I love it. Sick. Oh, it's not even seen the best bit yet. Oh, spare, spare parts. This is where it's at. Yeah, the spares. Okay. Pull some drawers out. Let's see what we're dealing with. Okay, so here we go. Then Gav took me into the room that I wanted to see, the accessory room. So they had this epic stack of drawers, each one with a different name of a toy line on it, and each drawer stacked with weapons and bits and bobs for action figures. Like I said, loose action figures get me fucking gassed. I love them. I love my loose action figures displayed with all the weapons. So I'm getting excited looking through these drawers, trying to find little bits and bats that maybe I can complete my collection with. Yeah, there's always Ninja Turtles weapons I need. I've been trying to find a trash can for Muckman for like five years and oh, just can never... I could get a complete Muckman, but I just need his trash can. Yeah, it's annoying. It's one of them where one day you have to end up just buying Yeah, 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 I will do. Yeah. I will, will. I'll just get to a point. Transformers the best. There's like... Yeah. See, one of the reasons I can't be arsed with collecting Transformers is there's so many little bits and oh, wheels and guns that bits, yeah. it's like, you know, I drive myself nuts trying to find a, a trash can for a Muckman. Never <laughs> mind seven different yeah. tyres and replacement and doors and stickers. Can I look in this one? The yeah, uh, Thundercats and stuff. Moat Monster Wings. Yeah. They're always nice. Yeah, right. This. Lovely box Moat Monster. Good shit. Well. Bengali's hammer. Have we got his hammer in there? Yeah. That's he, good. We've just he got a loose Bengali. Bengali coming this morning. That's good to yeah, know. Let me have that hammer. Yeah. <laughs> Get that out. The prize piece. There we go. Bengali's coming today. <laughs> There's his hammer. We were looking through the Thundercats drawer and we found a Bengali hammer and literally that morning a Thundercats Bengali had come in that needed a hammer so Gav were like, nice one, I can go and put that with the toy upstairs. This is why it's so important to keep all the little accessories and pieces that you get with toys. I've got fucking boxes full of them. I'm a hoarder when it comes to weapons and pieces. Some of them I'll never put with the figures. Some of them I never know what they're from. But when you do get that figure and you get that weapon and you put it in its hand and it's complete and it's got all its accessories, it always makes it worth it. Yeah, I, I've got like lots of boxes, like too many boxes of spares and you think, why have I got all this shit? And that's that's the reason why, because the, the one time that you end up along, it? sticking it on the piece, it makes it all worth it yeah. for holding it for all them years. Sectors, that's, I bet that's a nice draw. Yeah, let's have a look. What we got? Not much in there. No, it's a bear draw though. Yeah, some little bits, a couple of shields. 
reference it out more obscure. Oh, I tell you what, Mighty Max, we, we, I bet we that's don't a nice box. Spares for obscure stuff because, it, like, it's like guys like you and me will buy it. But yeah, yeah. There's not many of us. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There we go. Yeah. Told the rack gonna glove. I'm be shitting my nana with this, so I had arachnophobia. <laughs> One of my favourites as a kid, that one. Tim Clark, who invented the Boglins, he created these. He always like integrated puppetry into his toys. Now, unfortunately, they didn't have any weapons that I need for any of my figures like immediately. Any of that are like, like particularly on my radar at the minute. They will have had stuff that I could have used to complete figures that I've got in storage and things. But the ones that I've like got on my, on my mind at the minute, they didn't have any pieces for. One of the pieces being a trash can for my muck man. I've been after one for fucking years and I can never find one. And I still need one. So if you've got one, holler me. I need a trash can for my muck man. Hook a brother up. Or oh, rocket kazoo. Like Tempe shop stuff. Yeah, we had like three boxes of them. Oh yeah, I want to look at these because someone showed me these actually recently. Check oh, this. Oh, they're amazing. I just did a big documentary on Robin Hood toys and oh, didn't yeah. see these until after we'd finished. Look at these bootleg Robin Hood figures. We also found a bunch of these awesome Robin Hood bootleg figures and I've seen one of these before, but I've never seen them in the flesh and I've never seen a full set of them. If you know me, you know that I love those kind of Robin Hood figures. I did a whole documentary about them on this very channel and I wish I'd have had these when I did that documentary because they'd have been an awesome addition to it. But it's one of those, isn't it? You always find this shit after you've already done it. These are incredible. Song was Look at little John. That's it. Cash, cash Tear it down for what? Need to do a Brian Adams figure. That's what yeah. it was. Oh, there, Mint. Let me get a little. Oh. <laughs> This is also where they keep a lot of the stock that doesn't even necessarily go on the shop shelf. Some stuff is too good to put on a shop shelf. You know that you can get a better price for it if you put it online or if you put it in an auction or something like that. So this is where they keep all that kind of stuff as well. And although they just done a big shipment out, they just sent a lot of stuff out, they still had some nice pieces, including a box of Eagle Force, which are really cool, like old three and three quarter GI Joe size die cast figures. So they're really awesome to see a real high end figure. These sell for a nice price, but to see a load like that in the flesh, not something that I buy, not something I've got any of in my collection just because I don't have any, not that I don't like them, but again, really fucking nice to see. Little dope cowboy, look at that and all. That's when, that's when you know it's, it's, a, it's a rare piece. Yeah. They're so cool. Isn't they got it? some weight to them. Yeah, they die cast. I, I like yeah. that they're, they, they're packaged like an action figure, yeah. like a Brave Star figure but tiny. And like I said when I walked into this shop, this is the kind of place that I'm looking in every nook and cranny. I'm constantly spotting things. I'm quite tall, so I'm looking over. I'm looking inside boxes. I'm looking on top of dusty shelves. I want to find that corner that nobody's been in for years and find a box of something awesome there. Unfortunately, I didn't find anything this time, but I'm always in that mind frame and I'll stay in that mind frame whenever I go into a toy shop, especially when I get into the back room like this. But Gav did give us an awesome tour. And like I said, nobody even gets to go in that back room, let alone film in there. So I would have been happy just to put my head in and have a little look around. So the fact that we got to take our cameras down there and have a good sweep through the whole basement, like shouts to Joe and Gav for that, because that was really fucking awesome. They didn't have to do that. So much respect for that. It was actually like my highlight of the whole trip going into that back basement, as sad as that sounds. That, that's, that's the kind of thing that gets me off. That's the kind of shit I enjoy. So although I didn't get anything from the basement, there was a couple of things that I'd seen on the shop floor after doing several loops of the of the vicinity. And there were a few things that I thought, yeah, do you know what? I want them to come home with me. So the first thing that I saw that I really liked was a cabinet full of Denny Cyborg slash Muton slash Henshin Cyborg slash Shonen Cyborg, depending on what country you're from. But they're basically Mago style figures that were made in the 70s in Japan. And they're made from translucent plastic. I fucking love them. And they're a figure that's like naked, but then you buy costumes and put them on it. And over here in England, they marketed them as subforms. It was like a subform that you turned the bad guy Muton into. But then over in Japan, they were completely different. They were a micro man. They were a figure that was almost marketed like a Captain Action. You would buy this figure and then you would turn him into different Tokusatsu heroes. So you got Cayman Rider and Red Baron and all that kind of thing. But over here in England, the kids didn't know what those Japanese superhero TV shows were. So they were just marketed as costumes that you put on the bad guy Muton and you turned him into different subforms. So I grabbed one of Muton's subform costumes called Amaluk, which is like a green creature from the Black Lagoon, Gilman Piranha type creature. Absolutely awesome. When I walked in, I also saw a skeleton warrior figure by Playmates, and I'm currently doing a video on them for Slime House. I've not started filming it yet, but I've been collecting all the bits and pieces I needed to do like a real good video essay on the skeleton warriors. And although I've got most of them now, when I saw one on a card and it was a real nice price, I thought, yeah, I'm going to get that as well. So that also came home with me.
Now, I only had a certain budget that I brought with me to the shop. When I go to a shop like this, I don't go mad. I, I set myself a budget and I stick to it. So, I'd bought the Denny Cyborg Amaluk figure. I'd bought the Skeleton Warriors figure. But then there was one more thing that I saw that was going to take up most of the budget that I brought, but it was so fucking worth it. And it was this guy. Yeah, yeah you'll get him out. He's like, kind of like a rancor, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, I like him. Inhumanoids. So what I'd seen in one of their cabinets, right down at the bottom, easily missed if you was if you was not looking in every look and cranny like I like to. And it was a Metlaw from the 1980s show Inhumanoids. Now I fucking love this figure and you never see these in England. This is a toy that was, I don't even think it was marketed over here in England. And if it was, it was sold in like random little discount stores like Backstock that came over from America. But Inhumanoids was not a big popular line over in here in England. And you very, very rarely see them out in the wild. Very rarely. So when I saw he had a full size Metlaw in a cabinet, I was enthralled by it. Straight away I thought, yo, I'm pretty sure that's going to be coming on with me today. Right, right, so that's all it is, it's just a little bit of an issue, which, which is just a, a common issue with these kind of oh, things now, yeah. And that plastic that's just so brittle. Yeah, but look at that. Yeah, yeah, it's dope. So there was a little bit of an issue with the toy, basically. This is made from like an old metallic plastic. It's made from the exact same thing that Reyes Gun is made from, the old Kenner Star Wars Reyes figure. And I bring that one up as an example because recently I was sorting through some old Kenner Star Wars figures and I got Reyes and I picked up his weapon, his accessory, and it just like crumbled into biscuit in my hand. It gets so brittle. Toy Poloy did a whole video about it on like toys that don't stand the test of time. Well, Metlar's made from this exact same plastic. So one of the little catches that holds his head on had snapped but it didn't matter to me because the catches that it had left lock it into place nice and sturdy and I'm just happy to have the figure so because it was a little bit broken one Joel sold it at a discounted price to what he would normally sell it at if it was complete also he refused to ship it it wasn't on his website or anything like that he said I could have sold it a hundred times over if I was to ship it out but I'm not I'm only going to sell it if you come into the store because I don't want to risk putting it in a box sending it off and it getting broken so luckily for me this was something that you could only get if you was in that toy shop Great, yeah, it's like a staple piece that I've wanted for a while and uh... Yeah, he's really cool. We, we could have sold him 10 times over to refuse to ship him. Oh, all right, because okay. The chances are it'll get yeah, yeah, it's not worth it, yeah. It's not worth the risk of like destroying a beautiful old toy. No, no, like he's, he's dope. You know? And like I said, this is such a fucking cool piece. Like over in America, they're a lot more prolific to find. You do find them out there. There's still a rare piece, but you get them over in America and those kind of places. But over here in England, they're like rocking all shit to find, as my dad would say. So just seeing one in person was awesome and having the opportunity to buy it, like I wasn't gonna pass this up. And you can also tell that as much as Joe is a dude that sells this stuff and he buys stuff to sell, there's some things that he really doesn't want to let go. And this was one of them because I could tell as he was packaging it up that he started to fall in love with it again. And us collectors do that. Sometimes we'll get stuff out and we think I'm going to eBay that, I'm going to sell it. And then you look at it for 10 minutes and you think, oh, do you know what? I like it. I'm going to put it back in the cupboard. I'm not going to sell that one. And this was very much one of those moments with Joe. But luckily he did sell it to me and I was able to get that off him that day. Is that all in there? All in there for you. Nice one, dude. He's all ball wrapped up for you. Be careful, mind that gold plastic. So overall, it was a real good day. It was wicked to hook up with my friends at the Turnstile podcast and go and film some cool stuff. It was good to meet Joe and Gavin in person. And it was really cool to get a couple of bits that I really wanted for my collection, especially the Denny Cyborg Amulok Mutant subform and the Inhumanoids. So happy to bring them back to the Slimehouse HQ. Again, boys, appreciate it. Nice one. So there we have it, Leicester Vintage Toy Shop. Got a wicked deal on a few bits that I was really happy to find, stuff that you don't see all the time. You get that run of the mill stuff that you see everywhere, but there was a few bits in there that like are super rare, like the Metlar and the Shonen Cyborg costume that I got. And then if I got a Skeleton Warrior as well, cause I'm doing a video on them soon. So yeah, it was awesome. Didn't spend too much money either, which is always nice. It was also cool to meet Joe and Gav. Like I said, I've never met them in person, but we talked on Instagram. So it's always cool to meet somebody in person. They also have their own YouTube show, like I mentioned earlier. So they also understand the graph that goes into creating YouTube content. Who knows, we might even do something together again in the future. Also something else, once I got back, I realized how much I wanted the other Denny Cyborg subform costumes. So it was kind of like a no brainer to hit him up and be like, Joe, just give me a price for those other costumes because I need them in my collection. And now I'm so glad that I've got them. I'm gonna sleep like a fucking baby knowing that I've got them in my collection now. That, that's what helps me sleep at night, knowing I've got stuff. So 
Between those and the Metlaw and the Skeleton Warrior that I bought, like he sorted me at a ridiculously good price. I went into this store under the mind frame that like, yo, this stuff's gonna be like really expensive. I'm probably not gonna come home with much. And not really expensive because they wanna rip off customers or anything like that. They're just toy dealers that understand the prices of this stuff and understand the current toy market. So I thought I'm gonna be coming in, into this store, like I said, with the mind frame that I'm at a toy fair and I'm probably gonna come home with one thing. But I came home with several things for a really good price, all because he sorted me an awesome deal. So again, shouts to Joe and shouts to Gab for being so accommodating and letting us have such a good deal on such awesome pieces. Another really funny thing is that Tony and Alex from the Turnstile podcast, they're not toy collectors, but they are now because I took them to that shop and they got such a vibe for it, bought a few little things while they were there. And then now they're saying like, I feel is there any other toy shops that we can go to? Anywhere else you want to go? We might go back to Leicester Vintage Toy Shop and buy some stuff if you want it. And I'm just like, bro, you're hooked now. That's it. That's the gateway drug. You buy a few little bits of vintage toys and put them on your shelf the next minute you want more. And then the next minute you've got a house like me full of this fucking shit and, and you're officially a hoarder. But it also means that we're probably going to be able to do some more toy hunting together in the future. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I love getting my friends into toy hunting because I want all my friends to be into toy hunting. The more toy hunting friends, the better. The more people to trade with and travel around with and have fun with and film videos like this. Like, I'm all over that. I can't wait to film some more shit. Where are we going next? As I said at the start of this video, they also filmed a whole episode on me, so I don't know when it's going to come out, but I'll put the link into their channel at the bottom. They've got a podcast where they talk about a lot of stuff. It's supposed to be a football podcast, but they talk about a lot of other shit on there as well. So click on the link below, check it out, and, and, and keep a lookout for the video that they filmed on me because you're going to see this whole trip from a completely different angle over on their channel real soon. Now, like I said, this is the first time that I've ever done a toy hunting video in England. And I really want to do more of them. I'm not going to do like a whole series or anything like that, but I like going toy hunting. And if I've got an excuse to go somewhere that I've not been before and I can film it for Slimehouse, I'm all over it. So if there's any toy shops that you think I should check out, whether the ones that I've heard of before or ones that I've never heard of, let me know in the comments below because I'm up for going to them and checking out what they've got and filming Slimehouse episodes there. I want to do more of this shit. I also want to know if there's anything that you saw in them shots that you would have brought on for your collection. Anything that you thought I passed up on that I should have brought back. I always like to know what your opinion is when you watch this video. Is anything that you saw that you liked that you would have had to bring home and put in your collection? If you enjoyed this video today, please don't forget to give it a like. And if you're new to the channel, this is Slimehouse TV. I'm for your cane. Make sure you go back and binge the back catalogue because there's a shit ton of videos on this channel. I'm also on Patreon, so if you want access to videos early and some other exclusive dope shit, head over to patreon.com forward slash Slimehouse TV. And if you want to get at me on Instagram, it's at Theo underscore Kane underscore Slimehouse. And like I said, I've got a big back catalogue on this channel. I do videos every week, so I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, I'm gone. Boom! <laughs> and we film for your camera. <laughs> <laughs>